thank you again, everybody, for joining us. My name is Jack Shaw, and I work at Modern Health. I am a client success manager here, and I'm ex very excited to, to introduce our um, conversation today with Thumbtack and Modern Health. So again, thank you for joining us. Today, we will be addressing employee mental well-being in the post-pandemic workplace. Um, our featured guest today is Thumbtack's head of people, Yelena Georgievich. Uh, Yelena currently leads an organization of 50 team members across employee experience, recruiting, and benefits through to diversity, equity, and inclusion, organizational development, and everything in between. In her role, uh, Yelena is responsible for reimagining the future of work at Thumbtack, um, which is really exciting and something that is very top of mind, we know, for all of our clients today. Um, our conversation will be moderated by Modern Health's Vice President of Client Success, Lorna Henry. Lorna is a global customer success leader with over 25 years of experience at enterprise SaaS startups, software companies, and wireless carriers. As the leader of client success of Modern Health, Lorna deeply understands through the experiences of our clients, the complexities of fostering psychological safety in the workplace. And so I'm very excited to hand over the mic to Lorna to get us underway here and, and I thank you again all for being present and attending. Feel free to put your questions in the chat as we go along. We will have a QA. and a Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, everyone on the call for joining us today. You know, as parts of the world's reopened to the public and some organizations returned in-person work, many of us are reflecting on what we learned through the pandemic and considering changes we can make both personally as well as professionally to be more resilient in the future. And really at the center of this is priori prioritizing mental health and recognizing that all aspects of our lives, not just a uh, pandemic impact how we show up on a daily basis. So I'm really thrilled to chat with Yelena today about these topics and we'll cover specifically how the pandemic reshaped Thumbtack's approach to mental health also, Thumbtack's future of work strategy for setting up employees for both personal and professional success. And then also why and how Thumbtack partners with Modern Health and some best practices around implementing a mental health benefits. So um, just to start out, uh, this, this past year has surely been unlike anything that any of us have ever experienced before. So just to check in, Yelena, how are you and how has your life been impacted by the realities of the pandemic? Uh, yeah, I mean, a, a weighty question indeed. I think, um, you know, for me, when I think about my experience through the pandemic, um, probably a, a really a word that best describes it as a roller coaster. Like there was ups and downs. And if you ask me today, how am I doing? The answer is resoundingly great. Like I slept well, I got a workout in, I saw my kids, I'm working on awesome stuff today at work, seeing great people. Um, but that hasn't always been the case. Um, I, when we got sent home in mid-March last year, I was 35 weeks pregnant with a high-risk pregnancy. Uh, so I was already in a very heightened emotional state, um, dealing with anxiety that came from a tough pregnancy. I had had two miscarriages before, so I'd really been thinking about my mental health um, with regards to that pregnancy. And then you throw on the pandemic and really the fear for the health of my family, my you know soon-to-be newborn. Um, and it was a really tough time for me in terms of coping with um, all the uncertainty, the risk, the fear of the pandemic. Um, and for me personally, like I'm a very social person. I, my community is really my bedrock and um, that felt like it got taken away. And so over the last year, I really worked hard to figure out what were my coping mechanisms, what filled my cup. And it was really a process of experimentation to figure out how would I navigate and kind of refine um, a sense of resiliency through the pandemic. And so I feel like I'm in a very good and buoyant place right now. But to be honest, it wasn't always the case through the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, thanks so much for sharing that. I mean, you, you just, you named off so many things that would cause, um, you know, mental stress under normal pre-pandemic <laughs> circumstances. So to roll that all in within a pandemic as well, um, I, you know, I think it's, it's really interesting. Like you mentioned, you know, sleep, exercise, you know, figuring out what structure gives you supports. And it, it was funny, Jack, when you said, it, you know, mentioned like, how, how are you doing now? I was, I was exactly thinking to myself, gosh, I slept so good last night. It was a little bit <laughs> unusual for me. And so I'm, I'm feeling great. And it's like, 
it really brought home so much how these constructs that you can you, you could kind of get away with a, a bad night's sleep here and there um, or you know not exercising or not eating well or not doing some of the things that emotionally support you and then you throw the pandemic in, uh, on top of it and it's gone it's like nope you have to set these foundational constructs in place and it makes a huge 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 difference um, so boy, my, my heart goes out to you. Um, having actually experienced many of those things myself um, early in my life, I thankfully have three grown kids now that are wonderful, but also lost some pregnancies and had a high risk pregnancy with bed rest. And, and it was a nightmare going through that at that time. I can't imagine going through that in the middle of a pandemic. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but no, <laughs> here we no, are. <laughs> no, you get the resilience prize for sure. <laughs> Um, but my goodness. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, well, I guess thinking, thinking a little bit more about, um, you know, what, what is the conversation, um, and actions around mental health looked at Thumbtack historically, and then what are some of the key learnings that you've brought to it as a, a people executive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even I backtrack to before the pandemic, because I think that mental health was already, was always part of the fabric of how we made our people investments, how we thought about engaging with our employees. And I think it really went back to a real sort of foundational belief that like we should all bring our best selves to work. We are humans first and foremost. We are here to support each other. I think Thumbtack has always really believed in supporting employees on a personal and professional level um, and, and really being there for each other. And so you see that in how the executives show up and support people. You see that in the role of the business partner and managers. Um, but we had that foundation of a very sort of human centric approach to engaging with our employees when we thought about the programs and the policies that we built out. Um, so for example, our time off um, and our leaves, we have always had a company shut down over the holidays for about a week and a half because we really valued everybody taking share time off together. So you can fully disconnect and come back refreshed and do it all together. And, and so that was a program that we invested in further during the pandemic with monthly Fridays off and a week long company shutdown over 4th of July this year, um, or you see it in our leave policy Previously, um, we had a full suite of parental leave, caregiver leave, medical leave policies um, before COVID was a thing because we really um, believe that people needed to be able to take the time off to take care of themselves and their loved ones. You just you can't show up at work if that is on your mind or if you have some kind of physical hindrance. Um, you saw it in the EAP investments that we had. So we started working with Modern Health over the last year or two, but have always provided that service because we saw how much of a strain um, some of the roles were on people. So our frontline staff that was on the phone with customers and pros constantly hearing negative feedback, we saw how taxing that, that experience can be. And we wanted to support employees um, in dealing with this um, or even in our ERGs. We have ERGs um, that are traditional in nature in terms of like a women's ERG, a black employees ERG, but we actually also have a mental health oriented ERG as well called Access um, and, and have invested in that as well. So before the pandemic, we had a really multifaceted um, approach and a heavy investment in a lot of these different programs. And, um, and then we got to really lean into it uh, when the situation uh, with the pandemic arose as well. <laughs> Wow, that's that's incredible. I mean, even even talking about all the things you had in place before the pandemic hit, um, it just sounds like you were already thinking through many of these things. And, and I have to say that Thumbtack employees are pretty lucky um, that that's really an amazing slew of benefits that that you had in place. What um, you know, what kinds of things are you looking at to be even more progressive or or, or change that approach to be even more uh, proactive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, proactive is actually a really key word in how we think about it. The way I think about our strategy and how we have doubled down on a lot of these investments over the last year and a half were um, being proactive and then being very multifaceted um, and holistic in terms of the approach that we take. Um, so some of it came, you know, when we were having conversations about burnout with employees, I think there was almost this desire to find out what is the co root cause of burnout? Like what's the thing? It, and what we're searching for is a silver bullet to fix it when you ask for the cause of it. Um, and you start peeling back the onion and talking to employees about it. And you realize that for some burnout or anxiety or whatever it, may be, might be work stress. It might be their workload. For some, it might be 
a breakup or a divorce. For others, it might be a financial strain. It really is going to vary. And I think that sort of um, helped us develop this belief in that we have to have really multifaceted solutions. Um, and we can't um, pretend like there's a single root cause of any of these issues. Um, and then being really proactive, both in terms of developing the offering and then promoting it um, really deliberately. So take Modern Health, for example. Um, in May of this year, we had a really big company conversation around mental health and burnout. And we decided we wanted to double down on some things and then also just um, emphasize a lot of what we had. So we went to our employee base um, advertising what we have, the offerings that we have with Modern Health. Um, and after that big push, we saw an additional 60 employees off of a base of 600 North American employees sign up uh, for Modern Health. Um, we decided to do a week-long company shutdown over 4th of July. We added, we are, we have a, um, like a work from home stipend, um, a wallet that employees can use for um, learning and development, for childcare, but we decided to add wellness and fitness programs and mental health programs to that as well, um, and numerous other things. So it really is that multifaceted and very pro proactive approach of making sure that employees understand what resources they have and also destigmatize the use of these resources um, and start to treat it just as part of managing any element of your personal health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 so interesting because as people think about their physical health, of course, you know, everyone has physical health and they talk about the things they do to take care of it. Well, we all have mental health as well. And it does, we don't have to wait until there's a crisis. We should be taking care of it all the time. And so I think that's that's a really great way to put it. The other aspect is really that destigmatization and, and really helping people feel comfortable talking about it or saying, I need some help or support, or, um, you know, what, what can I do proactively to kind of address and support my mental health and wellness? And one of the things that we found at Modern Health as we work with clients, um, they're in all, all places along the spectrum. And I will say Thumbtack is pretty far along the spectrum being really advanced and thinking about and the programs that you have in place. And that's absolutely fantastic to hear. But in companies where that's a little bit further behind and they're earlier on their journey, we're really finding that these executive sessions and talking about it openly really helps make people feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we do all have mental health and we all have things that we need to need to do to take care of it. And um, so that that's really gone a long way just to open communications and make people feel less alone um, mm -hmm. in, in, in dealing with that. Yeah, it definitely starts from the top. I mean, I think when I think back about my experience and part of the reason why I've been so comfortable sharing about the miscarriages I've had and the anxiety that I dealt with after was because um, when I first joined Thumbtack three and a half years ago, there were two executives who very openly talked about their family experiences. And so when I went through this, I knew exactly who to call um, and who to go talk to. And I was so glad that I knew that. Um, otherwise, I would have suffered in silence. Um, and, and then it just wasn't an issue for me to say, hey, team, I need a week off. Um, I'm going to take time for myself or I'm protecting this hour every two weeks for a therapy session. Um, there was, it was just like going to physical therapy. It didn't matter at all what the cause was, but I felt very supportive. And it really started because of the example that leaders had set for me personally. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I just, I can only imagine how supportive that was for everybody else to hear you being so open about it. Um, so that's phenomenal. It's just amazing. Um, you know, thinking about uh, how, uh, you know, Thumbtack is such a close partner with Modern Health. Um, I'm just curious, as you were thinking about implementing a mental health benefit, what were some things that were important to you in the consideration process? Yeah, I think that it really came down to what the user experience was um, and making it something that is simple, easy, streamlined. There's no reason why this product is any different than any other product. Um, it is something that you should be able to consume easily and get a really holistic offering um, and a, a, a whatever you need. So when you log on to Modern Health, you can get your kind of your pulse check, you get meditations and, um, or you get webinars like this where you can learn, you get your coach appointments. It's just that very multi-pronged approach and a really seamless experience. It is a fantastic product. And I think for us, um, both us as a very product-driven company that holds ourselves to a very high bar with the pros and customers that we serve, and also our demographic of employees who really expect that of their product experiences. Um, those were some of the elements that we were looking 
looking to and made Modern Healthy like a no brainer because it was very aligned with how we think about product experience. Um, and it's been amazing to watch the uptick in utilization amongst Thumbtack employees. Um, and I think a lot of it is just because it's so easy. It's so easy to go sign up and to talk to somebody and to get help. Um, I think li- uh, eliminating um, those obstacles is a really big thing because the first obstacle of stigma is so big. So why layer on logistical obstacles after that as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I've spoken to people throughout my experience here who have, have talked very much about that, that they just hit a really, really rough spot and they needed someone to talk to. And then they went through their their list of, of people that they could call with their insurance programs. And there was, you know, 40 phone calls made and, you know, three callbacks and they couldn't see them for a month. And just how hard it was to even get to that point where they would recognize that they needed help and to reach out for it and then not to get it. It's just heartbreaking. And it, and it's dangerous. I mean, it's, you know, for, for a certain, you know, subset of people, it, it could be life-threatening to not get that help in addition to, to the overall impact on your life. So, I mean, I think that it's, you know, Modern Health is incredibly proud of the network that we've put together and having an average time to care of less than two days is, has been huge just to get people the help that they need quickly. So I'm super, super happy to hear that it's gone so well uh, for your organization and also just the aspect of the, the app itself being very easy to use. We try to make it really, really simple um, as people are, are onboarding into their app experience. Um, well, thinking about uh, you know, some of some things that we're all grappling with is, is figuring out kind of future support of employee well-being and also about the future of the workplace. Can you share with us a little bit about Thumbtack's approach there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for us, we are leaning into virtual first work. Uh, we, before the pandemic, we were an entirely in-office based company. There were no remote workers, no work from home Fridays. We really believed in building culture through the office. And the pandemic really surprised us in a lot of ways and helped us see some silver linings from that experience. Um, And I think there were two that really stood out that shaped our thinking. One was the flexibility that virtual work provided our employees. Uh, So previously you could only work at Thumbtack if you lived in San Francisco, Salt Lake City, or Manila. There were no other options. And now the pandemic forced us to, to rethink that. We, in the early days of the pandemic, we allowed employees to move wherever they wanted to across the country. We had to set up a, you know, a legal entity and register in the state, but we really wanted to support mobility for employees in case they had a personal need or just a preference to live elsewhere because there was no reason to stay stuck in, in the cities that we had offices in. So that flexibility was really important um, and kind of a newfound cultural principle for us. And then um, kind of a more effective and inclusive work environment was also something that we found. So previously you would have the people in San Francisco in an office room, in a conference room, and then you might have people dialing in from Salt Lake City or from Manila. And it just created a dynamic where it didn't feel like an equitable team experience. And now all of a sudden we were all gathering on Zoom. And while we dealt with Zoom fatigue and we complained about Zoom, the beauty of it is that we could all come together regardless of where we live, regardless of what team we are as equals on a Zoom call. And that was really powerful for us. We're a very cross-functionally oriented company as a marketplace. It's really important that we partner across functions, across teams. Um, And so that inclusive and really effective way of working really resonated with us. And so we really rooted around those principles of inclusion, flexibility, equity, um, and effectiveness in coming up with this model for us. And so we're leaning into virtual work. That means employees can effectively live anywhere. Uh, we have a couple of restrictions that we're working through. Um, and then we will be gathering for in-person events um, on a regular basis. So teams and departments will gather on a quarterly basis for offsites, and the whole company will gather for Camp Thumbtack on an annual basis, so an annual company event. But we recognize that having a place to work outside of the home might still be a necessity for some people, whether it is to go heads down on their individual work or if it's to get, you know, fill their cup socially. And so in our home office cities, which now includes San Francisco, Salt Lake, Toronto, and Manila, we'll still have a real estate footprint and we'll be opening up libraries, but they're meant for individual work and congregating socially. They're not meant for collaboration as all teamwork will continue to be virtual in nature. 
Yeah, that's great. And Yelena, how are you handling aspects of just that that collaborative aspect? Is it is it really kind of leaning into the Zoom and and then people will do their collaboration that way? Yeah. So initially, it's, it was very focused on let's move our old way of working onto Zoom, um, and that is where teams meet and gather. Um, but what we're looking at now is how to put um, common working norms around that. So one of, while in May, while we were really looking at employee burnout and sustainability, one of the learnings that we had were that employees were struggling in this bi-coastal workforce across all of North America with time zones. Um, and you know, sometimes West Coasters would be up at 7 or 8 a.m. on phone calls, or our East Coast friends would be on calls at 8 or 9 o'clock East Coast time. And so we decided to implement collaborative working hours. So team meetings, meetings of more than two people can only happen between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific. Nothing outside of that. If you happen to be on the same time zone as a coworker, you can meet outside of that if you want to. Um, but this really helped us set some boundaries and set expectations of this is when Thumbtack works together and you can manage your time outside of that. So it felt like a reasonable time period. The other piece of feedback that we got from employees was that they were we had such a meeting rich culture that they were finding it hard to get heads down time to really focus and think and do deep work. So we decided to have a no meetings Wednesday. So the only meetings you can have on a Wednesday are interviews or external calls, but no team meetings are allowed. And this is really meant to give people the space and time to think and do some of that deeper work that is often required to move the ball forward. Um, but we're looking ahead now. Um, and the next phase of thinking about how we collaborate and how we work is about improving our asynchronous working norms and thinking about how can we move, how can we continue to get work done outside of meetings Meetings outside of the nine to three window and starting to introduce tools and practices around documentation or project management in order to become better at asynchronous work, which I think is really the big unlock for distributed companies. Yeah, absolutely. It is because there, there's so much of additional perspective that you need sometimes when you're making those decisions. So I'm, I will be very curious to check in with you as you make continued progress on that. Um, I love that the nine to three meeting block because, you know, you can just wake up during the day and you, you, you can start out feeling fresh and look at your calendar and you've got nonstop meetings all day and you, you just feel deflated. Um, and, and really just being able to centralize it between the, a six hour chunk means that every day you should have some time a bit for the deep work. And then I love the no meeting Wednesday. That's that's a fantastic idea. It's something Modern Health does as well, although we, we probably need to be a little bit more rigorous about keeping it only to interviews and only to, to client meetings. So if there's a little bit of meeting creep that happens there sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Um, what about uh, just thinking about how mental health well-being fits into that strategy? Is that a little bit more of that? I know there, there's certainly some people that really just get a lot of energy out of being together. Is that kind of where you're looking at the more frequent uh, in-person meetings like, you know, quarterly and then the, the, the camp thumbtack approach of the whole, the whole uh, company getting together once a year? Yeah, definitely. That plays a big connection plays a really big part of that. I think it's um there's the connection element of it, which is I think where in-person gatherings, whether it's a really formal team offsite or just a local community happy hour, are going to be really important. And I over the last month or two, we've seen the world open up and a real craving and desire for people and friends and family to gather. And I think given how tight knit our employee base has been over time, there's also the same expectation that we will gather. And so we're thinking about that on a couple of different dimensions. Um, we wanna, we will facilitate the more formal events like an annual camp thumbtack, quarterly team meetings, but also really wanna invest in our local communities. So in San Francisco and Salt Lake, Toronto, Manila, we naturally have a existing employee population base, but as folks have moved across the country and as we've hired remotely, we actually have an additional eight cities where we have at least five employees. So we're really starting to see these thumbtack hubs across the country, whether it's in New York and Raleigh or Austin or Denver, Miami. Um, so there's these growing hubs that we really want to invest in as well. And similar to how we structure our ERGs um, and have ERG leads and have programming around that, our vision is to really invest in these local communities so that we can foster a sense of connection and cohesion um, on an in-person basis across the country, across Canada, across 
uh, the Philippines. Um, but the other element of mental health is also, I think, providing flexibility for employees. And that's where virtual work and the mobility that that provides is really important because employees can make personal decisions that meet their needs. So for us, all of a sudden, our personal decisions aren't at odds with our professional decisions. So if you want to move back to where your parents are, because they might be able to help with childcare and help you build that village, you can do that now at Thumbtack. Or if you want to go spend, you know, I spent three weeks on the East Coast doing a grandparent tour and a vacation while working remotely. Um, you can do that now at Thumbtack. So it's all these different ways, I think, of filling our cups and allowing employees to make these really important decisions for themselves that quite frankly, a lot of us weren't able to, to make over the last year and a half. Um, and, and again, taking this multifaceted approach of things that Thumbtack is instituting, but also decisions that Thumbtack is making in order to facilitate personal decisions that are really important for our employee base. Yeah, that is fantastic, Yelena. And what kind of feedback have you gotten uh, with your approach to, to mental health support and return to, to, to work what, from you know, employees, colleagues, executive team? Yeah, I think resoundingly feedback has been positive, um, but not everybody agrees with this model. You know, any model that you pick, whether it's in office or fully remote, you're going to have a portion of the population that doesn't necessarily agree. We, we've done two really in-depth future of work surveys with our employee base in October when we were starting to think about the model, and then in May after we rolled it out. And in the May survey, we asked employees, based on our future of work model, are you more or less likely to work at Thumbtack as a result of it? And 84% of employees said that they were more likely to stay at Thumbtack because of this model. Um, the other you know, signal that we've gotten from employees is mobility. So 25% of our employees have moved away from a home office location. And we asked a year from now, what portion of you do you think will move away? And an additional 10% of our employees said that they plan to move away in the next year. So I think that just speaks to the choices that the, the flexibility is providing employees. Um, when we did our week long shutdown over 4th of July, I think there was a very resounding positive two thumbs up from our employee base um, and a real appreciation for everybody getting to take collective time off. And it actually, um, the idea came from a debrief that we did with one of the, um, with our people team managers, um, where we were debriefing, we do these monthly pulse checks um, of how our different teams doing. And that's where themes around burnout really came out. And some of the team members said, I feel really guilty taking vacation. It's really hard to take it when everybody else keeps on working, especially for me, you know, maybe a recruiter who's on the hook for moving all these recs forward. And we started hearing this feedback across the company of this desire to collectively take time off. And so it was really this feedback from employees that drove this decision to shut the company down for a full week. Um, and we all appreciated it, including me. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah, we took a couple of days off around the fourth and it, it, it was the first time I've really done something like that where we all had the time off and it was also not a holiday for everyone. So we, I was able to like run around, get a bunch of errands done. Things weren't crowded. And it was really nice just to know that there weren't things going on that I kind of need to, needed to keep an ear out. It was just really relaxing in a different way. So it's nice to, to hear more of that happening. Um, and you know, how, how does the, how does your team, how does a people team feel about this, this initiative? Are you feeling like this could be a really strong culture differentiator for Thumbtack? Yeah, we look at it from a couple of different perspectives and quite frankly, every single team on the people team is helping drive this work and is impacted by it. So from the recruiting perspective, this is enabling us to access talent across the country. And actually the way I really think about it is the opportunity that this is allowing candidates from across the country access. So for example, in my in the roles that I've been hiring for, I've been having conversations with people that are based in Montana, in Atlanta, in Texas. This is all in the last three days uh, conversations I've had. And I just think it's incredible that all of these candidates all of a sudden have access to working at companies like Thumbtack. And we are so excited to um, learn from them and bring them on board. So I think that recruiting potential that our recruiting team and our hiring managers feel is really incredible. Um, and so just the simple opportunity of being able to work at Thumbtack is powerful. And then the flexibility that that provides. Um, and then you take it to our employee experience team, which is really driving the planning for our libraries, for our team events, for Camp Thumbtack, for working norms. I mean, this is really sort of galvanizing this team to think about 
what kind of employee experience do we want to create? What do we want to be known for? What does working at Thumbtack mean? Um, and a lot of the cultural principles that have always been true about Thumbtack still hold over. So we've always really valued community, belonging, transparency, ambition, uh, courage. Like these are all real tenants of the Thumbtack experience. But now the tools that we use to build that sense of culture and community are different. So previously, we really used our cafeterias to build culture and community. Everything revolved around the Agora, which is what we called our cafeterias. Um, three meals a day, delicious food, and it was always chatter over food, um, but it's gonna look different. Now it's gonna be virtual community building, local community hubs, team events, offsites, Camp Thumbtack. So while the goals of building a world-class culture and a really vibrant community still hold true, the tools that we're using are going to be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it cuts across all of the team. I think about our diversity, equity, and inclusion team, and now the sort of the sourcing opportunities that we have across the country to increase representation from a recruiting perspective, or how we get to think about equity from a different perspective. We've always done performance and compensation equity analysis from a gender and URM status perspective, but we plan on layering in employee status from a future work perspective. So do you live, out, are you truly remote as an employee? Do you come to a library once a week or are you at a library five times a day? You should see no difference in your progression and advancement at Thumbtack due to that personal decision, but that's something we're going to track and hold ourselves accountable to. So these are just three of the teams that Future of Work is touching in the ways that they are contributing, but it really cuts across every element of the people team and even beyond to our IT team, to our finance team, our legal team. Yeah, yeah, it's everything. Wow, that that is that is really exciting, and also, uh, you know, a tremendous it's a tremendous amount of change management. Even though it, it's all incredibly positive and exciting, um, it's just it's really quite a lot of rigorous work. And I mean, how are you caring for yourself while thinking about the well being of an entire workforce? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've, I think experimentation has sort of been the theme of trying to figure out exactly how I care for myself. Um, I've always been a big believer in a good eight hours of sleep and exercise in the morning, not that I get it every every day, um, but I really try to stay true to that as much as I can. And then I, um, over the last six months, I worked with a coach um, and, you know, met weekly or bi-weekly with a coach to really talk about my development, my mental state, what am I doing to take care of myself? Um, and so I'm continuing a relationship with a coach. I think that's been really helpful to have a sounding board um, and somebody to just partner with um, on myself um, and think about it. And then for me also community is such a core value of mine. Um, and so that's something I've been trying to think about while COVID was riskier, how did I build community? Now that things are opening up for now, how do I build community? Um, how do I reconnect with community outside of the Bay Area? Uh, so those have been a lot of the things that I've sort of dabbled with to try to keep myself feeling good and resilient and proactive. Yeah, that's wonderful. And a great plug for coaching, which is also part of the modern modern health offering. So hopefully uh, all the thumbtackers take advantage of that as well. Um, so fantastic conversation, Yelena. Thank you so much for all the insights that you share. It's really amazing um, feedback and insights, and I'm sure, I hope it was very helpful for our audience. And I, I know we have a couple of questions here. So Jack, I'll turn it back over to you for Q&A. Yes, thank you, Yelena, and thank you, Lorna, for your leadership in this conversation. Really appreciate it. We do have a few questions. Um, we'll try to get to maybe three of three or four of them. First question is, is for Yelena. Um, where did you and the leadership team at Thumbtack look for guidance when thinking about the future of work and returning to work? Uh, there's a few different ways that we have been hearing it phrased. Yeah, I'd say we, I'd argue that we are at work. We've been at work at, in our bedrooms and, and makeshift home offices for a long time. Um, where did we look for guidance? Um, really, it was like from within and from our employees. We benchmarked the heck out of the tech industry. We wanted to know exactly what every company was doing, but that was just to pull together examples. But for us, it was really about defining the core cultural principles that we were solving for and what kind of culture do we want to create and how do we want to evolve it. So when I mentioned that 
we've always believed in belonging, community, transparency, um, making big bets. That was literally a list of core cultural principles that have always been a true at Thumbtack. And then we said, what are things that we learned during the pandemic um, that we want to hold on to? So flexibility, a new way of thinking about inclusion and equity from a virtual work perspective were new learnings from us. And that's what we were really grounded in. And then we looked at the you know, four to five options that we could pursue from totally in office to opening up new hubs and having 10 offices to two days a week in the office to actual remote work and virtual work. And we went through a really rigorous process of looking at the pros and cons, but what we were really oriented around was what are the cultural and people implications of this model? So what would happen if we go two days a week in the office um, and three days a week work from home. What would happen is that employees don't actually have flexibility. They get to lob off four hours of commute every week, but they can't actually go move to where they want to move. Um, or if we move to virtual work, what does that mean for our culture? That means that we're really leaning into flexibility, but we'll have to work much harder to preserve cohesion and connection. And that's why we're making such a big investment in in-person events. Um, and we did that in partnership with the leadership team, but also with employees. Like I said, we did really in-depth serving of employees to understand their preferences, their needs. We cut it by level, by tenure, by department, by geography to really understand the nuance of what do employees need and want and what, um, how would our decision be taken by the organization? That's awesome. It's a very thorough approach. I'm sure that many are going to benefit from, from your answer there. Um, another question that we have directly for you is that, um, you know, you recently shared a pretty open uh, perspective on Medium as, as well as here. And we have curiosity into, you know, what inspired, you know, that post, which I believe you spoke a bit about to, today, but what are some of, what was the most interesting response you got from, from posting that article? We, well, we posted about future of work and mental health. So I'm not sure if we have any insight into what blog post might the, have. The, the future of work one, apologies. Yeah, I think we, um, we want to be really honest about who we are and what kind of company we are um, so that we can attract employees that are really enticed by that so we can set expectations. Um, and we believe that we've come onto something novel. Like we are really... Um, we're leaning into virtual first work, which a lot of companies are as well, but we're really investing in in-person human connection and community, and also thinking about libraries and real estate in a very new way. It is For us, real estate is not about collaboration and teamwork. I think that's what, how many companies think about it. It is about doing your individual work and socializing and gathering. And so we want to show others how we're thinking about this and make sure that we are attracting people who are going to really, um, who this model is going to really resonate with. That's one of the kind of core tenets of what we believe um, is going to lead to success with future work is being really explicit and deliberate about our norms, our expectations, our philosophies. So that's some, that was step one of what we're calling open sourcing our culture. Our goal is to make all of our people philosophies and processes um, and programs readily available so others can learn from them and folks who are interested in Thumbtack can know exactly what they're walking into. Awesome, thank you for answering that. The next question I suppose could go to both uh, Lorna and Yelena. Um, what advice do you have for people leaders? Um, you know, we did speak to quite a few themes today and you know, we just, you just spoke to your approach and future of returning to the workplace, but what advice would you have to people leaders that are considering a mental health solution today? Lorna, do you wanna go first? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I would take a look at your culture and kind of where you're at along the way. And then, and also just really um, looking, I mean, I, I think the pandemic really fast forwarded a lot of us through our learning curve about mental health and, and mental wellness, and really thinking about a platform that addresses all aspects of mental health and wellness and meets people at wherever they are. So something that really does incorporate self-guided learning, digital content, coaching, which can be incredible in many, many aspects of your life. And Yelena, you mentioned those at the beginning from you know, it, where people are at in their mental health journey varies depending on what 
the specific issues are that are going on in your life, be it your, your job at work, your professional life, your personal life, relationships, children, financial. So having, you know, a platform that can, that has coaches that can address all of these aspects. And then of course, therapy for when you're in clinical need of, of really engaging with a therapist. So I would say, look at a platform that takes care of all of those things. And of course has an amazing CS program, which Modern Health, I'm very proud to say, has the largest CS team in the industry. We have over 30 right now, with incredible people like Jack and many others. But I think that's a really important part of it is just not rolling out a benefit, but also doing it in partnership with our HR leaders and doing something that's very custom for what you're working on in your organization. Yeah, I love that. So much of that resonates with me. I think that um, for me, the two pieces of advice and, and quite frankly, learnings that I've had or realizations over the last year and a half have been first that context matters. The broader context that we're surrounded by, the environment really shapes people. So whether it's a pandemic, a divorce, fertility issues, like the context that employees have outside of their OKRs and Zoom and Slack and their email, that's going to play the biggest role on how they're feeling and how they're performing. Um, and so as, as leaders, as managers, as people team leaders and members, it behooves us to really understand what that context is so we know what an employee is dealing with. And then also realize that people are going to react very differently to context. So for example, right now, as things have been opening up, but things are a little bit uncertain with the pandemic, for some that might create a really positive and euphoric feeling of freedom. For others, it might create even more anxiety than they had last winter because there's so much uncertainty and nobody knows what's actually happening and what the risks are, you know? So I think keeping in mind that broader context and trying to get comfortable with seeking to understand it and doing so in a way that's very safe for employees. And then the second kind of piece of advice for me is it's not mental health, it's just health like physical, mental, emotional health, they are one and the same. And that's why I love that modern health is called modern health because I really think it is just like everything we've learned over decades about health is it points us to the same direction. It's all health. So take stress, for example, when you have higher levels of cortisol, your, blood, your glucose levels and insulin levels spike more easily, which can lead to type two diabetes. So just Think of it, thinking about the kind of relationship between stress, which we'd put in mental health, and then your insulin levels, which we put in physical health and diabetes, which is then our chronic issue, like it's all one and the same. Um, and so we really need to start breaking down the barriers in terms of how we think about health. And that's, I'm so glad that modern health exists, but I actually think in some ways, the healthcare industry and how we think about benefits as people leaders needs to be much more integrated and much more holistic. So I would not, you know, come open enrollment planning season in August, September, I would not separate out your physical health from your mental health. They are reinforcing each other and some in a package that we think have to think about as one offering to employees. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, that's awesome. Really appreciate it. There's one last question. It's a super short one, it, but it is also a two-parter because they're too good. They have to be asked. Are you hiring and what are your weekend plans? Oh, I am hiring. Come join our team. Um, we have lots of roles open. So we are looking for a leader of organizational development. So if you geek out on performance management, leadership development, manager training, L&D, come my way. We're hiring business partners. We are hiring ops and HRS manager um, managers. Um, we're always building up our recruiting team. Um, I'm trying to go across the people team and see if there's any recs that I am missing. Those are the big ones that come to mind, but definitely check out thumbtack.com slash careers and scroll for the people team. Um, there we go. JD um, from Thumbtack has posted it here. We would love to get more interest and are really, um, we're looking for people who want to innovate and want to push the boundaries of what people teams can do and the type of culture that we can create. So if you are old school and buy the book, I would probably look somewhere else. But if you really want to push the boundaries of what's possible in the people space, please reach out. Yelena at Thumbtack. You're welcome to email me. Um, and then what am I doing this weekend? Um, one of my best friends is coming to visit from Texas and we are planning a huge potluck for her. Um, and we're going to go on a hike in the Berkeley Hills um, behind my house. I live in Berkeley. Um, so I'm excited to get a good workout in, have some food with friends in my backyard and maybe try and get a massage as well. <laughs> 
That sounds like a great weekend. <laughs> what are you guys, Lauren and Jack? Awesome. What are you guys doing this weekend? <laughs> I got a hike on, hike on the books as well. So yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm with family in Philadelphia, so a lot of family time. But Yelena, I really appreciate uh, your openness and uh, your leadership today and answering all of these questions as well. Lorna, thank you for being our leader here at Modern Health and joining Yelena with us. But um, we will certainly be taking your guidance into consideration and sharing with um, best practices with, you know, I know in conversation with our clients and really appreciate you. And we'll look forward to our next meeting together. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Um, Thanks for the invitation. But invitations. enjoy, your, of course, come back anytime. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Yelena. What fantastic suggestions you had for, for everyone. And I know this was recorded as well. We'll be sharing it with some of our, our clients as well. It was absolutely fantastic discussion and just really congratulate you on your thought leadership in this area. It's really, truly amazing. Oh, thank you. And thank you for being such a fantastic partner. I'm excited to see what the year, what next year will bring. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Yelena. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you to all of our attendees today. Appreciate it.